so today's topic is kidney you can see here right sided kidney and left sided kidney so why i'm telling it right sided left sided slowly i come to the point so so kidneys are the structures which are present in the posterior abdominal wall so they are the primary retroperitoneal structures and they are situated at the level between the t12 and l3 so in between the t12 and l3 both the kidneys are there where right kidney is little lower than left kidney because of the presence of the liver in the right side now if we see the long axis of the kidney so long axis is going superior to inferior so long axis are not like straight they little inclined to medial so the upper pole of both the kidney are closer than the lower pole and left kidney is little closer to the median plane very interestingly if we see the abdominal quadrants kidney is there in the four quadrants epigastrium hypochondrium lumbar and umbilical here also epigastrium then hypochondrium then lumbar and this part will come the umbilical so therefore when you see the relations we will see that all the structures coming into this four quadrant they are coming into the anterior relation of the kidney now the different parts of the kidney it is having two poles superior pole and inferior pole superior pole is broader and blunt whereas inferior pole is thinner and pointed it is having two surfaces anterior surface and posterior surface but it is anterior surface is not face typically anterior it is little bit anterolateral so we should say anterolateral surface and posterior medial surface now coming to the two borders one is lateral border and one is medial border lateral border we can see this is convex but as medial border it is upper part convex then middle part it will be concave and again lower part convex this middle part concave part will form the hilum so upper pole lower pole anterolateral surface posterior medial surface outer border or the lateral border and middle border middle border the concave middle part is forming the hilum now the most important thing to know the structures in the hilum because this structures will tell you which side of kidney is this so we will see three structures the renal vein renal artery and the renal pelvis so from before backward renal vein renal artery and the pelvis so whenever examiner will ask you pick up the kidney and find out the which side of kidney so you first see the ureter so ureter is coming here becoming the renal pelvis it should be posterior and if you see the pole here pole is broader so you you can keep like this but usually if you see the ureter is going upwards it cannot be so ureter here directed downwards and the lower pole is pointed upper pole broad ureter should be posterior so this will be the left sided kidney you have to hold it like this way and you have to say sir this is left sided kidney you cannot hold it like straight way you have to keep it anterolateral surface posterior medial so this is left sided kidney okay and you can see this is the right sided kidney so how so this is the suprarenal the upper broad part you can see this it is attached here the lower pole it will point it now if we see the ureter renal pelvis it is most posterior or is vein artery renal pelvis so from before backwards vein renal artery and pelvis this has to be the right sided kidney so in this way you can differentiate between the right sided kidney and left sided kidney after side determination you have to hold it like this way is anterolateral posterior medial surface this long axis is little inclined to median plane and it is obliquely placed so that is the actual position of the 
kidney where anterolateral surface posterior medial surface superior pole inferior pole is the medial border and lateral border knee again i am showing this is a special specimen where you can see the supranal gland is attached so this is supranal automatically it will be upper pole this lower pole and we can see posteriorly here the renal pelvis becoming ureter it is posterior and this again it will be the left sided kidney so it's a very good specimen you can see here most anteriorly this will be the superior vena cava that is the right side so if we imagine this is the midline right side to the midline here you are getting the superior vena cava where the abnormal aorta is cut here so this is the right renal vein and this is the left renal vein this is superior vena cava and this is the most anterior structure so this has to be vein posterior you can see the renal artery and most posterior is the pelvis with ureter now coming to the relations so already i have told you you have seen this kidney is there in the four quadrant epigastrium hypochondrium lumbar and umbilical so all these structures we have to imagine when we'll describe about the relations of the kidney so let's take the right side first the right side here supranal then here the liver is there so the maximum part will be taken by the liver and we know here the duodenum so this part hilum we will get the duodenum okay and in the lower part you will get the right colic flexion so maximum part here you will get the right colic flexion and in the lower small part it will be related with the intestinal loops whereas in the left side so left side you can imagine here the supranal gland will be here this side the spleen and we know here it was the duodenum now coming to the pancreas so maximum part of the pancreas is taking care here and in between the supranal and pancreas you will get the fundus of the stomach so imagine here fundus of the stomach spleen pancreas supranal fundus of the stomach pancreas spleen here the major part will be taken by the duodenal jejunal flexion so here duodenum first part second part third part and fourth part so this part you get the duodenal jejunal flexion and the lower part we are getting the left colic flexion so colic inflation so the the lower part it is related to the left colic flexion so in this way you can imagine the structures anterior to the kidney and you can express the anterior relations now imagine kidney is a primarily retropetal structures so all the posterior abdominal wall structures related to the kidney will be described here almost they are same on the both side only thing we know the right side of the kidney is little lower so posteriorly it is related with the 12th rib whereas the left kidney is related with both 11th and 12th rib rest of the structures four muscles you can imagine this is the midline so vertebral column is there most medially it will be related with the psoas major posterior superiorly it will be related with the diaphragm posteriorly it will be related with the quadratus lumborum and posterior laterally it will be related with the transverse abdominis so these are the four muscles psoas major diaphragm quadratus lumborum and transverse abdominis all these are the posterior relations of the both the kidney now coming to the nerves as we know the kidney is extended between the t12 and l3 so three nerves will be related posteriorly first is subcostal then iliohypogastric l1 then ilioinguinal that is also l1 so these are the structures posteriorly related to both the kidneys four muscles three nerves and two ribs for the right kidney is related with only one rib whereas left kidney is related with both the ribs so this is all about the anterior and posterior relations so now i will take out all the specimens 
and will keep one specimen to show the inner structures of the kidney. So it was left sided kidney now cut. So after splitting we will see the kidney proper and this is the kidney proper and this part is the sinus, renal sinus. Okay, so this is the kidney proper and here you will get the renal sinus. You can see here how the vessels have gone inside so that is the renal sinus and this part is the kidney proper now kidney proper is divided by the outer cortex and inner medulla okay so this outer cortex which is is just below the renal capsule see we can see here kidney is covered by the true capsule that is the fibrous capsule or the renal capsule which is covering the kidney and it can be stripped off and is formed by the condensation of the fibrous connective tissues which is after covering the kidney it is coming inside and giving the outline of the renal sinus and it is blending with the renal calyces. And the false capsule which is renal fascia or the perinephric fat that cannot be shown here which you will appreciate when you do the dissection. So you can see how it is easily coming out from the kidney. So that is the true capsule of the kidney. Okay. Now coming to the kidney proper where we will get the outer cortex and inner medulla. And the outer cortex which is lying just below the renal capsule and it is extending in between the medulla where it is forming the renal column or the column of Bartini and in between this column we are getting 5 to 11 pyramid shepherd zone that is the medulla or the renal pyramids or the pyramids of Malpighi and this cortex it is almost pale yellow where it is dark brown in between these two pyramids there is a renal column so three dimensionally if you imagine one pyramid is covered both sides by the renal column so that is forming one renal lobe so around about 5 to 11 renal lobes we will get where this pyramid shaped medulla is there and the base of the pyramid is towards the cortex and the apex of the pyramid is towards the sinus here if you see very carefully this pyramid if you see very carefully the apex of the pyramid is invaginated into the minor calyx so that is called renal papilla you can see this this is the sinus this is the apex of the pyramid the renal papilla so now here you can see this is the renal sinus which is lined by the true capsule which is covering outside as well as the, the inner lining of the kidney proper. So this is the sinus where all the structures is the pelvis with major and minor calyces. You can get the renal artery, you can get the renal vein, lymphatics, nerves and fat. So these are the content of renal sinus. Now here already I have shown you is the renal papilla. You can see this. So this is the renal pyramid cortex. This is apex of this renal pyramid. There is the renal papilla. Now it is invaginating into the minor calyx. So here this renal pelvis is dividing into two to three major calyces which is again dividing 
into 5 to 11 minor calyces and into this minor calyces this renal papilla is invaginated so now the collecting tubules are piercing this apex and the renal sinus and draining into minor calyx in that way there is a microscopic structure you cannot see here but you can imagine seeing these structures here so this is all about the inside structures of the kidney